Okay, let's do this. Ah, squeaky ass chair. Okay. Welcome to the Little Miss Rarity recap uh, sort of thing. Um, I decided that I wanted to do a uh, recap to sort of get people up to date on exactly what's going on in the Little Miss Rarity story. Um, and get you all, you know, uh, caught up. So that people don't actually have to go back and read the entire blog. Even though I encourage them to, of course. But I mean, there's a lot of it. Uh... Yeah, you can go and you can download the Little Miss Rarity First 99 pack for $2.57 um, from my eJunkie profile, which I'll link in the description of this video. Um, but you can also uh, just watch this recap. So now that we're a minute into the recap and I haven't even started to recap, let's, uh, let's recap, why don't we? Okay. So, um... In the first segment of the entire video, you see uh, Little Miss Rarity laying on a uh, table with a blanket over her. She's got some blood down near her uh, groinal area. And she... I'll just put up a picture of it. Okay, so you see this picture right here. Um, and uh, she's laying on basically an operating table that's in uh, Twilight Sparkle's house in her little library house. Uh, in the previous update, um, the previous couple updates, it was mentioned that uh, she needed to, she, as in Twilight, needed to go and get the body of Rarity so that they could extract the horn and they could get the uh, get her memories um, because they needed to rebuild the world. Um, so, uh, in order to rebuild the world, they needed memories to work off of, because that's how Malice works. Um, Malice being the... Uh, he's hes a goat. He's the god of uh, fear, nightmares. hes He invented nightmares, basically. He's a multidimensional being that uh, created fear so that he could feed off of it. And he's a symbiotic parasite that allows mankind to... You know, it allows all creatures of all dimensions to exist in order to feel fear. He has a counterpart named Lucidia that's never really been mentioned yet in any parts of the blog. Uh, she created love and hope so that she could feed off of that, and they're basically the two parasites that created love and fear, which is actually a reference to Donnie Darko, where everything in existence is uh, categorized into fear and love. Don't you love it? Okay, um, so, uh, in the latest update of Little Miss Rarity, before the animated one, um, update 99, uh, you saw Twilight, I'll put up the picture, Twilight shivering in front of a, uh, there's something in the corner of the screen, you can't really tell what it is, that's Rarity's body. Twilight is scared because she has to start operating on it, and it's, you know, she's looking at her dead friend, I mean, she's terrified. Okay, so Malice goes inside of her head, like, whoop, and then, um, and then, uh, I think I said Froosh was the, or Foosh, or, I don't remember what word I used, I'm not looking at the picture right now. Okay, so, um, Malice went inside of her head, and he's now dwelling inside of her left eye, and, uh, he's going to tell her how to rebuild the world, because the world is now burning, because Abaddon came along and destroyed the world. It's slowly burning with a uh, bunch of pink fire that's destroying everything. Don't you love it? Okay, so um, in the very beginnings of the update, you see Twilight uh, grab a scalpel, and she cuts around the base of Rarity's horn and pulls the horn out of her head. Uh, my little headcanon for the... Uh, um, for the horn of a unicorn is that on the other side of it there's a crystal that is basically nestled inside of their brain and uh, it, it lobes of their brain are connected to the crystal which allow them to use their uh, body's entire nervous system in order to channel magic into their horn which is why their levitation spell requires them to have physical strength in order to lift, lift something up um, which is why they get so worn out trying to lift up heavy objects with magic. Um, 
but I think it's a muscle that can be exercised kind of that it's a reference to Chronicle if you've ever seen the movie Chronicle where he says it's kind of our power is kind of like a muscle the more we use it the more powerful it gets um yeah so uh Chronicle was a really good movie you really need to go see it viral marketing for Chronicle um created by MTV Pictures anyway uh so she gets a scalpel cuts around the base and then uh she um, pulls out the horn, and there's the crystal on the other end. The crystal has a unicorn soul inside of it. Thankfully, Rarity was a unicorn because the world that they need to build needs to be built with uh, memories, and the memories are contained inside the soul, and as long as the horn is still on the body, then the soul is trapped inside of the horn. Um, so uh, he opens up basically a little TV screen kind of thing, um, oh, I forgot to notice. Did you notice that her cutie mark is glowing inside of the, uh, inside of the crystal? Inside of the crystal right there, it's glowing. You guys ever notice? Okay, moving on. Uh, he opens up basically a TV screen because he's malice, he works like that. And he says that the world reconstruction is in progress. But first they need to, um, access the memories, of course. And then the world reconstruction is in progress. Uh, then it all begins. It all, all of Little Miss Rarity started with Rarity sitting, uh, she was under a lot of stress and she was trying to get some dresses finished. And, uh, all of a sudden, something happened to Opal. She kind of went crazy and got really violent all of a sudden. Uh, so we see a scene of Rarity working under stress and then we see Opal, uh, getting attacked by these horrible tendril things. Now, I'm going to go ahead and explain what these horrible tendril things are. These are called the Tendrils of Malice. In a much earlier update, when uh, Twilight Sparkle was doing the Rite of Blood and Bone that summoned Malice into the world, I'll show a picture of that, uh, one of the things she mentioned was uh, the Tendrils of Malice. The Tendrils of Malice are his, his, his goatee hairs. It's the hairs from his goatee. They're these little, uh, that's why they're so scraggly looking, because he's got a goatee that's real scraggly, and, yeah. Anyway, um, anything that they touch gets corrupted. Basically, they went and they touched Opal. Uh, the reason for this is because Abaddon, the horrible demon that destroyed the entire world, had stolen some of the tendrils of malice and was using them to gain access into Rarity's world. Um... So basically, at this point, he decides that he's going to set his plan in motion. The plan requires her to sacrifice a cat. Yeah. So, he corrupts her cat and makes her attack uh, her. I hate saying that. Makes her attack her. It's like, which her is which? Anyway. Makes Opal attack Rarity, and then uh, the, uh, then the whole crazy nonsense begins. So then Rarity gets her scars and she uh, proceeds to throw Opal against the wall. Um, this breaks Opal's neck and kills her and then she freaks out because, oh no, what have I done? I killed my cat. Um, and she decides she's going to document her life. She's going to make a confession because she decides she's going to kill herself. And that's why she goes and grabs the camera. I'm, I'm dead serious. This is the reasoning behind this. I'm, I'm sorry. This is the actual reasoning. I know it's stu- Okay. She decides she's going to go get a camera and she's going to make a confession that she killed her cat and this is her last message to the world and she's going to go kill herself. Um, but when she grabs the camera, um, she had touched Opal, right? And uh, Opal had one of the tendrils on her in some spot. She had touched Opal in order to throw her at the wall. Um, and she touched one of the tendrils. This corrupted her too. So as she's sitting there trying to confess to the camera that she, uh, she got in a terrible scuffle, you know, in the very first uh, update of The Little Miss Rarity, she says she got in a terrible scuffle with Opal and she ended up, she ended up uh, accidentally killing her and she gets like teary-eyed and stuff like that. And then she says, uh, she went online and she found Pink Amina Diane Pie and blah blah blah. I'm not, I chose not to mention Pink Amina Diane Pie in any points of the, uh, the update because I'm trying to wean away from that. Um, yeah. 
because, you know, that's that's their thing. It's not my thing. I shouldn't be using them for popularity. I already did. Anyway. Um, so she, uh, she d gets to the point where she decides she likes it. She likes the, uh, the feel of pain and the feel of blood, and she likes the fact that she killed her cat. Next, we have a heart coming out of an object at the bottom of the screen. That's her pulling her cat's heart out. Um, the reason why is because she made a doll, a creepy pink Amina doll, that she is going to put the heart inside of. The next scene, you see her sewing up the front of the doll with the heart inside of it, and the heart is beating. Um, the heart beating is, uh, you know, it's a reference to a much recent, or much earlier update. Um, on Halloween, I had posted an animated GIF of, uh, the Opal Mina doll, uh, laying on its side and its heart was beating and it was really creepy and everyone was creeped out by it, so I put a reference to that in there. Um, then we get to see the doll's face, and the doll's face is pretty creepy. This was before I realized that I could just make the doll, like, a full body and make it zoom up the doll, so unfortunately the scene, like, zooms from above its head down to its face, and it's like it barely shows it, but whatever, it came out looking kind of creepy. Um, then, uh, Rarity grabs the knife. This was because of a seemingly random update I made where she's carving a knife, or er, carving a, uh, heart into her chest. The next, uh, next segment right after that shows the heart being carved into her chest. This was, uh, she was torturing herself because she decided she liked pain, so on and so forth. Uh, next we have her struggling, uh, to accept herself for what she just became, and she's got the uh, she's got the heart all sewn shut on her chest and everything like that, and she's hugging the doll. Uh, she basically falls in love with the doll because it reminds her of Pinkamina. Next, we have uh, Sweetie Belle sitting in a chair, and uh, she's struggling to get free, and Rarity's you know pulling a knife on her. This is because uh, she had received a question on Tumblr. I'm going to explain what the Tumblr questions are, by the way. I'll go ahead and explain them right now. They're basically just voices that she's hearing in her head. Um, way later down the road, we're going to be hearing exactly what those mean. So uh, you guys just get to wait for that to happen. I don't, I don't give a damn. Anyway, um, the... Uh, so she's about to cut... She, she received a question that basically said that... Uh, she should find out if Sweetie Belle also likes being hurt, and so she went to cut Sweetie Belle at one point in time. Uh, and then Twilight showed up and spoiled her fun, so we have Twilight coming in the door, and I tried my hardest to uh, make her look like she's saying rarity. Um, I don't know if I pulled that off very well because I'm really bad at lip syncing. Uh, in the animation. I'm really bad at animation in general. Have you guys noticed from the animation itself? Anyway, um... So then next we have uh, Rarity through her sewing machine at Twilight, and then uh, she basically apologized to Sweetie Belle. Um, then she went through a giant contest where she uh, decided that she wanted to have like a permanent marking to signify her transformation into a new Rarity. So she called out to her fans to give her a design for a heart. Um, tattoo. Well, basically, give her a design for a tattoo in general, and I chose the heart one because it looked really cool. Um, so then she goes and she gets some branding irons and decides to brand over the uh, heart she has cut in her chest in a previous update, as you guys know, and uh, and she proceeds to heat up the irons and then brand her own chest. Um, at that point. Point. At that point in the uh, uh, blog, I was really bad at drawing the, uh, the the branding iron going against her skin, and I decided to make it so at that point the camera cut off and, and faded to black really quick. I made it fade to black really quick at the end of this one for the same reason. Like, I was like, oh, I'm animating it. I could totally make it, like you know, really, really, really extreme and, like, actually let people see the entire branding process. And I was like, nope, at the end of this part, I'm just going to make it fade to black real quick. Like, like quicker than all the other ones. You'll notice all the other ones, like, really slowly fade to black, and then that one's, like, really quick. Yeah. 
Uh, then we get to see the brand itself, and it uh, still stings a little. He Anyway, that's a reference to whatever. Um, then a lot of other stuff happened. A lot of other stuff that I didn't really feel was important to the story. She answered a lot of questions. She cut her hair off, all kinds of stuff like that. It was really weird. A lot of stuff that I didn't really think was all that important. Um... Then, uh, we have her shaking and jittering as there's, uh, blood coming from every single orifice in her entire body, including her pupils. Um, this is something that happened completely randomly. I'm not yet going to explain what this was, but it did mean something. There is a much deeper meaning to why she suddenly started to bleed, and this is going to be explained on a later date. Um, so I'm not going to explain it now, but there is a, there is a reasoning behind why she started to bleed from everywhere. Um, then, uh, she's all wrapped up and she's struggling and she, uh, chokes and she dies. She chokes on her own blood and dies. This is because Sweetie Belle, uh, came to help her and, uh, covered up every single one of her, uh, parts where she was bleeding with gauze wrap and ended up making her not able to breathe and uh she was like trying to yell at sweetie bell that she couldn't breathe and she couldn't get through to her and sweetie bell thought she was saying i can't believe it even though she was saying i can't breathe and she was like i know i can't believe it either and then she like ran away and she's like anyway um so uh she choked to death then uh, she woke up in the hospital. Uh, the dream that happened in between that uh, involved Pink Amina, and like I said, you know, not mentioning Pink Amina very much. Not for any negative reasons or anything, it's just, you know, for respect to uh, the Pink Amina Diane Pie blog, uh, I don't really want to mention it too often. Um, then we have uh, the lights flickering in the... Uh, in the, uh, the, the, the room there, and you see the, uh, Pink Amina doll standing next to her, which, you know, it's the Opal, Opal doll. Um, as I've explained many times to my fans before, the reason the doll is so creepy and came to life, she sacrificed her cat, pulled out its heart, and put it inside of a doll. I'm going to explain all of this very clearly at the end of this. Um, anyway, so, um, next, uh, she went home from the hospital, and uh, some guards proceeded to show up. One of them was named General Stormbreak, and then there were his uh, his uh, 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 his his uh, sexy man servants, um, Stoic and Stalwart. Um, General Stormbreak is the one seen with uh, with the eye missing, and he's got his hand on, uh, or not his eye missing. He's blind in one eye. He's got a scar on his lip. And he's got his uh, hoof on uh, Sweetie Belle's shoulder, and Sweetie Belle is crying. In this scene, there's actually a lot going on. Sweetie Belle was confronted by the guards because uh, Twilight had said that something really fishy was going on at, uh, at Rarity's house. And the reason why is because when she went over there to check it out, she blacked out and woke up later with head bandages on and was in her bed. So she was scared, and she called the guards and had the guards go over to Rarity's house to see what was going on. When they got there, Rarity was in the hospital, and, and Sweetie Belle was there. Sweetie Belle told the guards everything, including that Rarity had tied her up in a chair and, and cut her chest. So, um... And I just realized I forgot to draw the, uh, the cut on Sweetie Belle's chest in that scene. Oh yeah, she was wearing a dress in that scene. I'm off the hook. Okay, um, so uh, so she told the guards everything, but she said, "Oh no, it's okay. You know, we we made up about it." And she said she was sorry, and you know everything's fine, and you know it, it doesn't matter, and it does you know so on and so forth. But they still arrested her because she put a child in a chair and cut her. You know, it's still illegal. Even if they, even if she apologized and they both made up after it. And they figure, you know, she's a kid. She doesn't understand that, you know, that's a horrible thing that happened to her. So on and so forth. 
even if Rarity's never going to do it again. It's like the guards don't understand that they're sisters, you know, so and so forth. So she gets arrested. So there, that was a very important uh, part of the blog. Um, next we have Rarity hanging in the dungeon, and then something comes out of her chest. Well, guess what? Uh, growing inside of her uh, for a while uh, has been a demon by the name of Abaddon. Um, when she... Uh, okay, so the process to summoning a demon, to summoning Abaddon into the world, is basically you... Um, there's a lot of things you have to do. Uh, you have to sacrifice a cat, um, first off, and then you have to take out its heart, and you have to put its heart inside of an object of desire. The object of desire was the Pink Amina doll, because she, uh, she was in love with the Pink Amina doll. Um, and then uh, you have to accept the uh, demon into your world through birth. Um, so basically, he has to find a mother who is desperate enough to have a child, or not a mother, a woman who is desperate enough to have a child to want to birth him into the world. And uh, at one point in the blog, I had mentioned that Rarity was unfit for childbearing. Uh, and that was uh, when everyone asked, why, uh, why do we call you mommy? And, uh, that, you know, the whole mommy's still pretty thing. Uh, the reason why is because, quote-unquote, every little filly has her dreams. And she was crying while she said that. She was unfit for childbirth. And, uh, and that made her sad. So she was desperate to have a kid because all she ever wanted was to be a mother. So she agreed, un sort of subconsciously, to allow this demon to come into the world. And so, as it's growing in her womb, it decides to come out and reveal itself to her. And, uh, and it's a big, creepy, horrible snake thing with, uh, with the doll's face and claws and stuff like that. And it ends up cutting the throat of the guard, and then it lets her off the chains and, you know, so on and so forth. And they leave together, blah, blah, blah. Uh, next we have her, uh, she went home... And she was freaking the hell out, and then uh, her eye turned black uh, randomly, and she started freaking the hell out. I'm not going to explain what that means yet. That's going to ex get explained way further down the line. Um, she decided to go to uh, Zakora to find out uh, what was wrong with her eye. So in the next little segment, we have some poison joke, because when she got back... I hadn't made it clear enough that she had walked through Poison Joke going to Zakora's, and that's why she has button eyes when she wakes up the next morning. Um, which is why in the next segment she's freaking out, because she has button eyes and she can't see. Uh, she also runs into somebody. Um, I left this part out because I thought it was a little too sexual. Um, she runs into somebody who basically kind of takes advantage of her while she's blind you know not rape or anything of course not rape it's completely consensual you know she even says she likes it um but uh and it turns out to be general stormbreak of course we uh she doesn't know that she's blind she doesn't know who her assailant is she just really likes the way he touches her um and it turns out to be general stormbreak and she wakes up and she can hear her bathtub overflowing and she can hear something going on in her house and she goes looking around and she's going like oh who are you i just want to know who you are you know it's only fair you know considering what we did you know and blah 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 and she slips on the water of her overflowing bathtub and hits her head and uh knocks herself out well she didn't quite just knock herself out she effing killed herself um and then she's drowning in a bathtub full of the poison joke remedy and her eyes go back to normal and the last thing she sees is just water and blood and white. So everything fades to black. But that's not it. Uh, she then woke up in another world and in the other world, um, a lot of stuff was going on. I mean, a whole lot of stuff was going on. She basically got a second chance. This was the final 
thing that was needed in order to bring Abaddon into the world, and he wanted to destroy her world. Not the world that she was living in in the Little Miss Rarity story, her actual world, the actual rarity world. So that's why she wakes up in the actual world where everything's going on the same way it was going on before. You know, like in the show. And she says she doesn't want it. She doesn't want any of this. She doesn't want all this blah blah blah, you know, so on and so forth. And she ends up uh, going back to how she was. She kills her cat and she rips his heart out and she's going to do the whole thing over again. And then uh, Applejack shows up and she's like, what the hey are you doing? And uh, and then Applejack decides, up, oh, you know, this is too weird for me. I'm going to leave. And uh, Rarity pulls her into the room and decides, you're not going to interrupt my plans. I'm going to go back to the way things were. I want everything to be bloody and horrible and monstrous. And you know why? Because she wants her kid. Well, a little bit later down the line, she ends up getting Pinky and... Uh, and uh, Rainbow Dash in there because she wants to... I don't entirely remember why she brought Pinky and Rainbow in there. All right. She wanted to uh, tell them about like everything that had happened because everything needed to happen the way that it happened before. She needed Pinky to kill Rainbow Dash because in the world she had come from, Pinky had killed Rainbow Dash. Let's just ignore the fact that you know, Pinky and er, Rainbow Dash and Rarity had a little crossover thing with fractured loyalty. Let's just ignore that because Rainbow Dash was supposed to be dead because Pinky had already killed Rainbow. Dash. Anyway, so she wanted that to happen again, and she wanted to bring it all about, and so on and so forth. This is probably wrong, but I'm not checking my own sources in order to figure this out. Um, there was probably another reason she went and got Pinky and Rainbow Dash. I think she just wanted to like make Pinky into a killer again, and then make Rainbow Dash into Fractured Loyalty again. Anyway, so then, uh, what the hell happened next? Oh yeah, then right as she was about to do everything the way it was supposed to go, boom, her water broke. And by her water broke, I mean a horrible demon, aim, a demon arm came out of her out of her hoo-hoo. Anyway, and then uh, the horrible demon arm turned out to be a horrible demon that ripped her entire lower half open and uh, made her start to rapidly bleed out and die. Um, the horrible demon got up and uh, turned out Applejack was some sort of superhero as she breaks the wooden pillar binding her to the wall and uses it to smack the uh, demon upside the head, which turns out to be a bad one. He finally, like, he was birthed into the world and now he's going to destroy it. That's his plan. So she's ma Applejack smacks him in the head and then uh, Rarity is laying on the ground and then Applejack's saying, like, oh, you know, if only you would have known what you've gotten into, you know, like... You didn't, you didn't want to be any part of this. And then Rarity says, What are you talking about? I did want to be part of this. And Applejack's like, What? And she's like, You don't understand. I wasn't fit for childbearing. You know, you don't understand how hard it is for a pony who's only wanted to be a mother her entire life to be told that she's unfit for childbearing. So I took this opportunity. I knew what I was doing. I wanted to birth this demon into the world because I needed a son. You know, you don't understand. I won't let you take my child away. And then she throws a knife at Applejack and stabs her in the arm. Um, then a lot of other stuff happens. And uh, then Abaddon ends up destroying the world. However, the world is slowly being destroyed, not rapidly. It's going to take, like, you know... Okay, I guess it's rapidly if you consider that the whole world's going to be destroyed in about 20 minutes. But then, Twilight, uh, in the meantime, has been doing the Rite of Blood and Bone. There's a reason for this, and this reason is going to get explained. Um, she summons Malice into the world because she needs Malice to destroy Abaddon. Because Twilight knows everything that's going on, even while it's not 
you know, happening right in front of her. She knows. And the reason why is because Twilight has been dabbling in her in Malice's Black Book. Malice's Black Book is what he sends into other worlds in order to uh, get curious readers and occult members and stuff like that to summon him into the world, basically. And uh, she looked through his Black Book and used the Rite of Blood and Bone to summon him into the world, and lo and behold, his son was there, Abaddon. Um, so he is about to destroy her entire world after he takes her teeth and uh, and tells her not to open her mouth for 257 days. Um, he says he'll make a deal with her. This whole world is about to die, but since he summoned her into the... Since she summoned him into the world where his son is and he wants his son dead, he's going to make her a deal. And because he thinks she's sexy as fuck. Um, but, uh, he decides that he's going to make her a deal, and the deal is basically, he'll rebuild the world that, uh, he'll rebuild a world, an already destroyed world, and bring, uh, Twilight and her friends in there, which will also in the process revive Rarity, who is the illegitimate mother of his uh, his bastard child um, if she allows him to dwell inside of her head because he needs a mind he needs a mind to dwell, to dwell inside of he exists inside of a mind because um, he's a parasite that's what he does so he gets Twilight to agree to sacrifice herself to constantly be a host to the Lord of Nightmares in order to save her friends and bring them to a new world. So he decides to tell her, after going and killing uh, his son, Abaddon, uh, oh, and in the process, Applejack got her arm burned off. I don't know. That's going to be important later, but she got her arm burned off. I mean, that's kind of a big thing. It's going to be a big thing anyway. Anyway, she was also called the bearer of the fruit of Eve. Just keep that in mind. Anyway, so uh, then uh, Malice went inside of Twilight's head and said, all right, Let's begin. You need to get the soul of your unicorn friend because we're going to rebuild her previous world. And there you have it. Full circle. The whole thing's been explained. You boofs. You, 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 you dirty boofs. You, you dirty boofs.